Here, Bogus, you can sit here. You can sit here. No, no, not on me. Just, just sit here. Sit. That's a good boy. Hello. Another video. So um, I thought I, um, I I mentioned on my last video that uh, if there was anything else that you guys wanted me to review or talk about, then that um, I would do that. And I offered up camera bags as an example, and a few of you, you too, said camera bags it is. So here we go. So this is what I have in terms of camera bags. Okay. So I have this is my dog Boggins. Hello, Bog. Say hello. Wave. Okay, so this is my three bags, and uh, in no particular order. So we have the Ona Union Street messenger bag, the Peak Design messenger bag, and the Think Tank Retrospective Ten messenger bag. I guess as well. They're all they're all kind of shoulder shoulder strappy, you know, bags. They all have shoulder straps. And um, they all have shoulder straps and they also all have little handles that you can just pick them up with like this, which is quite convenient. Now, the bag that I use um, primarily is this um, Union Street bag, the Ona Union Street bag. So I guess I'll show you that one first. I'll just put these two down here for just a sec and I will bring this one over. And the reason... I use this one um, over these two bags um, is primarily because it just stores my stuff the best and it doesn't fall over, which I'll come on to whenever I talk about the Peak Design bag, unfortunately. Um, so this has got a nice kind of solid, I'll just clip these uh, buckles in just for a sec so it's not clattery. Um, so it's got a nice kind of solid base to it nice uh, leather base uh, waterproof obviously so when it sits on the ground it's not going to soak through um, but it just you know it's nice and solid it doesn't doesn't tend to fall over or anything like that and uh, just from a, a features and functionality point of view it's it's what I need from a bag I don't need anything too fancy I just need it to be able to hold my gear separate what I need to be able to separate and uh, somewhere that also stores my laptop and things like that. So I'll go over the main the main compartments. So uh, it's got this lovely strap, which is actually very comfortable. Um, you can slide this kind of cushioned shoulder strap part up and down to your preference. Um, it's fairly easy to change the length of the strap. Just slide that out and you have a shorter strap. Slide it back and you have a longer strap. So. I actually think that's probably the first time I've ever done that, maybe in at least a year. Um, so yeah, it's in around there somewhere. But uh, yeah, it's a lovely strap. Um, it's got a little handle. Now, the only thing I'm not mad about is actually the placement of that handle. I, I wish that this handle was here because when you lift the bag up, you'll see that it tends to tip, you know, to the front, um, which is fine I guess it's not any big deal but it looks a bit stupid doesn't it it'd be nicer if it kind of was like this when you were carrying it much like the peak design bag which you know it's got a handle in a fairly uh, a fairly um, kind of solid place so <clears throat> that's the only that's the only kind of downfall I would say it's got a large compartment here at the back that snaps closed with a like a magnet mechanism so um, that's quite nice and in this, I tend to store my phone. Don't have my phone here, it's over there. 
um, but I'd slot my phone in there or my wallet or maybe if I was at a church and they were handing out the little booklets I'd maybe grab one and slide one in there just to kind of keep me on track or maybe remind me on some of the bridal party names and things like that slot that in there um, there's a pen okay anything else no thought I might have found like a, a wayward contact lens or something like that so that's the back compartment it then has two side compartments so one here and one on the other side and what I tend to use these for are sometimes I'll maybe slot my car keys in there or also maybe my phone if um, if I kind of would prefer to put it in there sometimes but I tend to use this pocket the most for used batteries so whenever I finish with a battery I'll take it out of the camera and I'll pop it into that into that pocket the only thing I'm not mad about with this pocket is is that it kind of will stay kind of open like this so it doesn't it doesn't um, have a little magnet mechanism that'd be nice if there was a little magnet in here much like this back pocket that just would keep that keep that shut um, it's never really been a problem but for the first time the other night I noticed that uh, when I took my camera bag out of the car that there was a, a battery lying in the in the boot of the car so um, that obviously just slipped out of that pocket so that's the only thing I would say about those pockets but they are handy um, then you've got these lovely buckles at the front uh, which you can adjust um, depending on how full the bag is so you can make these straps longer or shorter um, but they just clip in quite nicely so once you open it um, it's got these lovely little flappy bits here that kind of protect the camera from any rain so if there's any rain or anything it won't slip into the bag uh, so they're quite nice and then inside the uh, bag are three primary compartments so i'll just hold that up there so there's three primary compartments there as you can probably see and the dividers are quite nice they're quite thick fairly substantial uh, and you can readjust them with the Velcro. So I'm gonna just rip that off there. So they're quite padded and uh, yeah, they're, they're really nice actually. Uh, and very easy just to kind of place in where you want them. Um, they're almost kind of tricky to put in actually because the Velcro is just so incredibly sticky, but that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, you've got those three compartments. So I tend to store in the deepest one, I put in my X-H1, which is what this video is, is being recorded with. So I'll put my X-H1 in here, I'll put my X-E3 in this uh, middle compartment, and then I'll just stack my lenses in this uh, final compartment. Um, this is where a laptop would go in, so you can open that up and slide your laptop in. So I have a 15 inch MacBook and it slots in there, no problem. I'll, I'll go and get it actually. I actually don't need to go and get it. My laptop's right here. It's in the Peak Design bag. So, in goes the laptop. And that sits in there quite fine. And you have this little Velcro strap that you can just fold it closed and that stays in there. So yeah, XE3 into the middle compartment. <laughs> then I have my lenses. So this is how I store my lenses, believe it or not. It's uh, probably not the best way in the world, but the little cloth bags that come with Fuji lenses are kind of perfect and I tend to just leave the caps off on both ends and I'll just flick that in there, give it a bit of a wrap and tuck that into that bottom corner and do the same with all my lenses. That's the 50 f2 or 35 f2 rather and that is the 23 f2. I'll pop that in there. So I've got those three lenses stacked in there nicely. Let's make it an awful rattle. I'll take that off that tail. So yeah, I'll um, have my X-H1 then in here. And then in the front compartment, you've got a, a zip that you I intend to leave open, but anyway, there's a zip area. And the zip area has uh, one very large front compartment. And then the then the, the back part then is separated into several little segments. We have an area for pens, which I should probably put that pen into. Then you've got two little, um, two other little areas. Um, I'll try to maybe do a cutaway to show these a little bit closer, but you've got two little areas. In one of them, I just store some cards. In the other one, I tend to store memory cards and other little bits and bobs. So 
the little kind of peak design uh, clips for my camera. Um, uh, one of these little ball joint things for for one of these spider holster jobs. Whoops, put some of these things down. So there's a little spider holster so you can grab, put this to the bottom of the camera and then you wear this on your belt and you can clip that in and your camera will just hang quite loose. That's not an official spider holster. This is a, a cheap knockoff um, on Amazon for about a fiver. So that's broke and they always break, but I hear that the original spider holster one doesn't break. What else have I got in here? Another one of those ball joints and another one of those ball joints. And uh, that's about it maybe. Oh, an Allen key. The Allen key is used to put those little ball joints on. So yeah, so just memory cards. And then in this front compartment, I just store all my batteries. So all my batteries are just left, left in here, quite loose. Um, so being a Fuji photographer, I have quite a lot of batteries actually. Maybe too many batteries. I'd say some of these batteries have probably never been used. What else? So that's it. So batteries. And what else is in here? Oh, the little Fuji um, EF-X8 flash, little hot shoe flash. Might be handy. It's in the camera bag. And that's about it really. Oh, I had, I had this little ND filter, which I actually only bought recently. I actually bought it to record these videos, but it's pretty nifty. I haven't really had to use it yet. Oh, I think I used it yesterday. I think I used it for some of the cutaways in this video, actually, um, when I was recording outside yesterday in the in the sun. So um, yeah, this is a pretty snappy little ND filter from Gobe. Could be Gobe. Gobe, I'm gonna call it Gobe. Um, so it's a snap-on ND filter. It just snaps onto the front of the lens. So that's in there. So that's really about it. So I just store all my batteries in here and that little flash and that clip and yeah and then when I got my camera in and everything else I'll just get the battery grip and I'll place that in on top close that over and tuck those sides in and there we have the Union Street bag and it's not it's not pretty heavy it's not too heavy would be with that camera in it I guess but um yeah it's a lovely bag I love the finish on it it's a lovely kind of waxed canvas um, it kind of takes little scratches, but it, you know, it kind of wears nicely, I think, with age. So that is the Union Street bag. So that's my primary bag and I really love it. So the next bag then is the Peak Design bag. And one of the primary things, I bought this Peak Design bag with all the hope in the world that it was going to be the bag. Because I think every photographer is, you know, looking for the bag the bag that's going to just make everything perfect and uh, i thought it was going to be this bag but unfortunately it wasn't um it's it's a really smart bag it's got a lot of great features but there's one huge flaw that well i keep saying huge flaw with certain uh some of my videos but this one just tends to fall over a lot now it probably won't fall over now because it's not loaded with any equipment but if i had my laptop in here and some camera gear it tends to just flop forward and um you can see that it kind of leans that way automatically and it has this kind of like beveled front here you see that it's kind of got this little this little lip at the front so the actual base is quite narrow and the base isn't the same width as the entire camera bag so um, when it sits down you have to be very purposeful of, of sitting it down so that it rests on on that bottom edge um, otherwise it can just tend just to, to fall over on its front and that happens more often than, than not really. And it just after a while becomes quite annoying. But in terms of an actual bag, it's a, <clears throat> you know, it's a very nice bag. It looks well. It doesn't scream camera bag, much like I don't think the Union Street bag does either. Um, and it's got some lovely, lovely functions. So like, for example, to get to the laptop, you can just, um, you have two, two uh, zip compartments at the top. So one accesses your laptop which has got a nice padded uh, coating between the camera bag and, and the back part of the of the of the bag. Um, or you can undo the, this other zip and you can access all your camera gear so you can pull out your cameras out through that, which is also quite, quite nifty. Then you've got this lovely little clip 
some people like this clip and some people don't like it. I'm kind of mixed. Sometimes I like it and then other times it can be a little bit um, annoying, um, especially if you want to leave your bag in a kind of like an open position. So for example, if I bring up the Union Street bag, I could just leave it like that and access it whenever I want to and not have to worry about having to pull it down and open it up. Um, or as with the Peak Design bag, you have to tend to pull this clip down to open it up. Now, it's quite a nifty little catch. It um, You kind of just pull it and it will kind of, by magnet or something, just hold on there quite well. Uh, but inside this, um, you then have in this front um, compartment, you have a little, it's full of um, zips and compartments, this bag. So you've got a little area in here that you can store more pens or maybe some old fisherman's friends for a bit of a sore throat. Nobody likes a coffer during the ceremonies. So um, they're in there. Um, and then on the inside, then you've got this little kind of pocket here and within that you can store maybe like a little notebook or you could probably get a well, you could definitely get a phone in there no problem you could stuff your phone in there um, and then the inside again is separated into three compartments um, now inside these compartments you can fold these kind of little dividers so it comes with these little dividers that are all kind of as you see um, kind of broken into little foldable you know lines I don't know how you pronounce I, I don't know how you kind of explain that but yeah so you can kind of um, make this divider larger for example or you can make it smaller um, what else could you do with it you can maybe fold it back on itself so when it's in and you can then fold it back on itself oh like that so yeah you could then you could then have that in the camera bag and have something sitting on top of it. It's kind of hard to explain, but yeah, you'd fold it and then fold it another way and you could have another piece of equipment sitting on top of that. So it's quite it's quite a nifty little system. Um, if maybe a little bit, I don't know, a little bit confusing maybe um, to set up in some way. Ah, it's not that bad actually. Um, so you'd have one two and then if this was in three but what you can do is you can also shove things in between the joints so you'll see there that there is um on the over over here you'll see there's a divider there's two dividers but you can actually slide things between the dividers as well which is quite nice um so that's pretty cool you can just slide something in there maybe again like a phone or something maybe slim like a little hard drive or something like that um, so, and this is what I have ended up tending to use this bag for. I tend to use it if I'm going to a wedding and I know that I'm going to be there until the dancing and I've got a couple of hours between the couple sitting for dinner and then the dancing, I'll maybe bring my laptop with me and maybe offload files and have a quick look through them and things like that. If I know that I'm not going to have any company or anything. Um, so, um, so yeah, I tend to use this as my laptop bag. But then on the front, you have a little, uh, another little foldable area. And inside this, it folds down quite nice, which is quite good. And you'll see you have these areas that are separated into green and red. So this is for like, you know, you can store little memory cards in there or batteries or whatever it happens to be, uh, cables, all sorts of various things, whatever you want, really. So um, they're elasticated, which is quite nice. So they have a lovely little elasticated, um, you know, feel to them that kind of keeps them quite snug. And then you've got areas at the front here for storing batteries. Again, you've got uh, green and red. So that's kind of handy for storing maybe used batteries. So fresh batteries and used batteries. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, 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 it's quite nice. Then you've got these pockets on the side. And you've got two of these, one on this side and one on that side. And I think the one on this side comes with a little clip. So this is uh, uses the Peak Designs uh, uh, you know, general clip. So you could, what I tend to do is I have a set of house keys there um, and the house keys have got the clip on it. So I can put that clip in there and the house keys are locked onto this then, which is, which is quite nifty. But you can also, you know, you can maybe put one of those clips in your phone, for example, if you wanted to. Could you? I guess you could. You could hack it some way. And uh, you can stuff that in there, which is quite good. Oh, sorry, my dog uh, did something there and I had to... Um, 
look after it. Anyway, um, it also has a, um, a little clip in here on both sides, so you can pull... Uh, yeah, yeah, you pull that out of there and you do the same from this side. And the bag comes with a, another strap that you can attach to this. I mean, you have it over your shoulder, you can then attach it around your waist as well. So that's kind of nifty. Um, I don't have it on because I just know I'd never use it, but I would guess that some people probably would use it and uh, really enjoy it. So uh, there we go. So I'll shove that in there, zip that up, close that over. And I would say that, you know, in terms of a, of a, of a bag, it's a great bag. There's not really a whole lot wrong with it, but um, yeah, I just kind of could never really get used to the fact that it just kept falling over whenever the bag was loaded with my gear. Um, I think when you load it fully, so if you have bargains, I'm trying to do a review here. Um, I think when you load the bag fully, when you have the three different um, compartments filled up, you have a laptop in and things like that, it'll be fairly solid. But maybe without the laptop, it maybe falls over or with the laptop on its own, it also tends to fall over. Um, but other than that, it's a good bag. The, the strap is quite nice. Um, this large, this large uh, long strap, which you can adjust. Um, you can only really adjust it. Well, actually, no, tell a lie. You can, you can pull it here and it's got that lovely peak design slide kind of adjustment, which is quite good. Uh, and you can also adjust it even to make it even longer or even shorter by unclipping this little attachment here and uh, moving that up. Uh, it's padded on this side and smooth on, on, on this side. So if you were to flip it over, it's kind of got a, a grippier texture, but still not super grippy. So um, so I keep thinking there's a car coming down my driveway, which there isn't. But there's, it's got this kind of stickier kind of um, section so that if it's on your shoulder, it's not really supposed to fall off. But it doesn't really work super well, to be honest. Um, so that is that. So that's the Peak Design bag. It's, um, it's a good bag, but it's just not my favorite bag. Um, so that's that. Then on this, in this bag here, which probably isn't really loaded in quite the correct way, is the Think Tank Retrospective 10 bag. And it's a bag that I quite like. I love the material. Um, again, it doesn't really scream camera bag, I don't think. And it's a nice little bag. And what I tend to use this bag for is flashes and gorilla pods. So um, it's got a it's got a quite a smart little Velcro system, actually. Um, so it's got two Velcro tabs, two very large Velcro tabs, and you can fold the Velcro tabs um, closed to make it silent. Um, so if you're in a church or something like that, you can it means you can open the bag up nice and quietly, and nobody will hear. Um, obviously, if the Velcro tabs are closed, then you get this lovely sound. Um, I don't remember it looks over. So, um, so yeah, so I, I actually just leave one open. Um, I never have this in a church, but I just leave one open because um, one is enough to keep that flap closed quite, quite well. So um, inside this bag, I have three Gorilla Pods um, shoved in there. I have two uh, Young No uh, Speedlights, um, YN563s, which work very well for um, with the Fujis. Uh, I know they're not official Fuji flashes, but these are cheap. And I don't tend to use any TTL flashing or any or flashes or anything like that. All my uh, flashes are just set up um, with manual configurations and uh, therefore they work fine. Um, and then I have a little Nissan i40 flash, which is lovely. And I use this for dances. So I use these two, these two Young No flashes for... Um, on remote uh, gorilla pods, so I'll have one of those young nose on each of these gorilla pods with a with a wireless trigger, and then I'll have my uh, Nissan i40 uh, set up on another wireless trigger, and then I'll eventually transfer this onto one of my cameras for uh, the dancing. So that's in there. Um, I have some little pec pad cleaning pads. Um, I have this little cable. This is actually a uh, I think this is actually a cable that was for the Canon but it works on the Fuji. So you can connect that onto your hot shoe and connect the other end onto your flash and you can use it. But I eventually thought, I don't really need it. I can just, I can just put the flash on top of the camera, but it works. Um, or I could just put it on a trigger and that works in the same way without the cable kind of getting in the way. 
So this bag is a very nice little bag. I could probably get away with using this bag actually as my uh, instead of the instead of the larger Union Street bag because I think I bought this bag long before I ever moved to Fuji. And um, but it just tends to have my my flash gear in it, and I leave this in the car for most of the day, and bring it in whenever I need to shoot the dances. So um, the bag has again, like most of the camera bags, three primary compartments, uh, or three ma or three primary separations, I should say. So um, again, if I was maybe putting Fuji gear in here, I'd put the XH1 into the largest one, the XE3 into the other one, and my uh, lenses into the other part. But what I tend to do is put two of the flashes into one, one of the flashes into another, and then I kind of stick the Gorilla Pods in there and kind of bend them forward. So quite nice, uh, nice compartments. Again, you can take out these these dividers and separate it whatever way you want to. Um, it's got a little zippy pocket here, which you can store, um, I don't know, wads of cash or a phone in there if you wish. Um, then within this at the side, so you've got two little side pockets. So in here, you'll see that there's a little um, uh, kind of Velcro strip and you can shove other things in there as well. And there's one of these on both sides of that main compartment. So that's quite good. It's quite a, a nifty little uh, area to, to store whatever you want in there really. Again, probably a phone or a wallet, somewhere that's out of sight. And you'd never even, if you were to open this bag up you would hardly even notice those pockets, so it's quite safe and secure, I think. Um, I don't know, I guess if anybody's gonna nick your bag, they're gonna take the whole thing and take it and, and uh, look through it at home, aren't they? Um, so then you've uh, got this um, little, another little Velcro strip that can keep this section closed, but if you open that up, then you access two additional pockets. So in here, I have all of the triggers for those young no uh, flashes. And uh, and then the other part, I have little tripod stands if I ever kind of feel that I need those. And it also has this, which is quite cool. It's a little, um, it's a little kind of lanyard with um, uh, a little clip on the end. And I used to have a little torch on this actually, so that I could look through my camera bag when it was dark, but I don't know where that torch has gone now that I think about it. Maybe this isn't so good after all. Anyway, so that's there, that's quite nice. And then at the front part, again, you have another Velcro strap if you want to have it closed, but I tend to just have it like this and leave it open. And inside here, I've got one of those little magnetic Gorilla Pods, which are pretty nifty. I have, I don't know what that is, uh, instructions for a loom cube. Um, so this is a loom cube, um, which I bought, to be honest, I haven't really got the most out of this. I haven't really used it properly. Um, so I'm not going to review that. Um, oh, a lapel mic for some reason. And then my little uh, triggers for to set off those. Uh, so these will plug onto the camera and they will set off these triggers, which in turn will set off those flashes. So they're in there. Should have, oh yeah, two of them, that's right. So one for each camera, that's correct. So they go in there. Um, yeah, so it's a lovely bag. Then you've got these two these two pockets on the, on the side as well. The only thing is, they're kind of hard to get at because you have these large kind of thick straps right where you'd stick your hand in, but you can gain access, it's just probably not the easiest. There's probably a reason for that actually, and I can't quite figure it out, but yeah, it's got those two handles and it's, this bag feels so solid. If I'd say one thing about this bag is it feels so solid. Like I feel like I could probably pull that at my full strength, which probably isn't really all that strong, but um, that bag would hold up to pretty much uh, a good rigorous tug. Um, so yeah, so it's, an, it's a nice bag. Um, as a, again, I could probably get all my Fuji gear in there without any problems. It's also got another zippy compartment at the back. I don't know if I mentioned that, but it's got a zippy compartment at the back as well. For shoving in like maybe an iPad or something like that. I'd say that's probably maybe what that's intended for, uh, a decent iPad. And um, that's about it. It's got a handle, but you can carry it like this. Again, it's kind of placed at the back of the bag, so it tends to uh, tilt forward. And then it's got this very large, thick, uh, quite grippy uh, strap that if that was on your shoulder, it would be, it would, yeah, it would, it would stay on there pretty well. 
and again a nice adjustable a nice adjustable strap that's fairly easy to adjust uh, to make it longer or shorter so yeah so again i just tend to use that for all my flash gear i'll throw it all in again here just for demonstration purposes bush bush um like that in there shove that in there uh, that goes in there these go in there that goes in there right in there headphones or earplugs rather very important for dancing little set of little set of earplugs there um lapel mic then what's in there put this cable in there put my cleaning pads in here and then in go the tripod so i tend just to shove those tripods in there like that lay them all up and maybe give that a close and give that a close and there's your think tank bag so all in all i love this bag i love the union street bag not totally mad on the peak design bag but um i'll give peak design a huge thumbs up for their camera straps which are brilliant so um yeah there we go um that's the three bags i own um i don't know if that was a I don't know if that was a useful review or not. Who knows? Who knows? It's probably a bit long. Um, I'll maybe put shortcuts into each individual bag in the um, in the first comment or something like that to see if anybody having to watch that full entire twaddle. That's it. Three bags, done and dusted. This is my favourite. And what I'd really love to do actually is review the Union or the um, Ona Prince Street bag because that bag looks utterly beautiful and i think if i had that prince street bag my life would be complete yeah okay over and out thank you so much tell us which bag is your favorite in the comments below and also um yeah if uh oh there comes my wife in her car okay folks over and out please like please subscribe leave any comments in the box and um yeah, that's my dog. He's about to kick off Jalux because his wife is back. His wife, his mother, his human mum. Okay, bye.